In the automotive industry, there's a little bit of a counter culture, like groups of people that do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. And in the automotive scene, you'll see people say that counter culture is slammed, static, cambered cars with the pokey boy toys that make you go all the way on the ground and stay that way. But also in the truck scene, there happens to be a little bit of that too. You have truck guys and gals that are installing their suspension kits only halfway through. I'm Alex, Alex.fi on Instagram. And on today's episode of Opposite Lanes, we're gonna be comparing a slammed static Mazda 6 versus a half-lifted Ford Bronco. Let's take a look. Hello? Will you turn on? This might be dying. So this is Jacob's Mazda 6, okay? And in terms of what he's got going on, it's, it's a lot of looky-looky, which that's okay. And he has some RSR, R703s, he's got some silvers, extreme lows, and then uh, he's pretty much just slammed right on the ground. He's got some spacers in the front and rear because this is a front wheel drive car, so to make it all fit and look flush, he had to go with spacers up front some smaller spacers in the rear and now we're here he's got some good old uh little lip kits pieces things like that to make it look all aggressive in the front and uh, some aftermarket headlights now one of the the best biggest things with static cars and the reason that we probably do it in all honesty is because of looks right it looks really good it's super flashy and when you compare it to something that's like on air Air's almost better. We do it for looks, that's pretty much the biggest thing. So when you're going and you're getting your rollers, it looks absolutely tight. Now, compared to air suspension, sometimes people don't always get the best rollers because they go with super, super wide wheels because that they can tuck them or they want that fender to look fitment, but then it looks funky once you actually air up. Static slam cars really don't have that. And on top of that, it's kind of like playing the old game on hard mode. And some people really like that. Unfortunately, you do have a little bit of an issue with the old basic turn and burn. Uh, any sort of bump ever in existence, pretty much every road in Wisconsin ever is gonna have some form of issue. And uh, hitting a bump can just take you into outer space because of how firm it is. And every single time you rub, it just makes you feel like there's one less rabbit in the world. Now, the reason that people really do go into like these sort of cars, or at least what we've found is Conventional cars like Mazda 6, four-door cars, things like that, are really starting to get popular and modifying because, well, they're just a daily driver that you can make look good. They still have the reliability, they still have the space, they still have the trunk, they still have all of that. Now, what about, uh, what about performance? <laughs> are, you, are you serious? There's no, no, there's none of that. We don't, no. Not, that, not in this Mazda 6, no, we're good, we're good. We don't need none of that. I legitimately tried to get past this light and I couldn't because it just won't fast enough. One of the things that a lot of people say, what about the pros and cons? What about the practicality of a slammed Mazda 6 or any slammed static car? One of the biggest things that I remember and that I know when I'm driving this car is practicality is there but it's almost just like playing it on, on like heroic mode. It's just a little bit tougher. Inbanks take a little bit longer. Parking takes a little bit longer. Putting people in your car is now a math equation that you didn't know you'd have to take in the eighth grade because if you have two people in the back that weigh 220 pounds and 190 pounds, how much does the passenger in the front actually need to weigh so that you balance out the weight? Then you gotta talk about spring rates and things like that. Now what I can say is that can get actually a little bit annoying. It's one of the biggest difficulties of having a slam static car. Now, some people just refuse to care, and that's one of the big things with slam static cars is that they'll just drive them until something breaks. It doesn't matter how many noises it makes, how many more noises it makes, doesn't matter how many tires that get shredded.
None of that matters until it actually happens, which is why a lot of times with slam people, they just don't care. I mean, it's just balling out, you know? I don't, what was that? I don't know, maybe I'm getting old. I don't think I am, but there's definitely a possibility. Another like big pro and a con is obviously it looks super good, but you're sacrificing what makes the car a car, which is just daily driving practicality, the way that it feels, the way that it drives. Now on the extreme lows, so these are silvers, they're still really good. They're still, I would say, tolerable, but I think it's what the seats that helps it so much. You put this sort of high spring rate and a super strong suspension in there that's extreme low, on some race seats or something like that, you're probably gonna slip a disc. Not something that I would highly recommend. Even with this car, it's it's a Mazda 6, and if you've seen Mazda 6's stock, they're really not much to look at. They're just a baby blue daily driver. But throw some RSRs on it, some silvers, and all that sort of good stuff, and lo and behold, you have a car that people would actually want to drive. Now, I say actually want to drive, and that may make a couple people in the comment section angry. Maybe they don't like Mazda 6s, okay? But what I can say is, when this thing is on the ground, it looks good. And even though you can't turn more than this, because you'll rub, if I don't have any friends, and I didn't have a girlfriend, I'd probably daily drive this all the time. Right now, I just got Max. Right, Max? Right. <laughs> Do I turn here? I almost had a panic attack. I thought to myself, that was the end of Opposite Lanes. Second episode, done. Is that a cop? That's a cop. It's not, it's, hi, hi officer, hello? Haha, <laughs> you wanna know why I didn't get pulled over? <laughs> Cause I'm in a Mazda 6, baby. Ain't nobody pulling over a Mazda 6. Where am I going? Where am I going, Meyer? Where am I going, church? Probably, you don't know, because I'm in a Mazda, baby. A baby blue slammed Mazda. And to everybody that's not a car enthusiast, it literally just is a Mazda. And that is, that is a good one in my book. Next up, we have, if there was a vehicle to get pulled over in, it was probably this one. It's gotten followed around by squad cars multiple times in its lifetime. Um, it looks like it could probably smell but it's a banging baller haters truck and it's awesome and i really can't wait to drive it and hopefully uh not crash it because i have a feeling i have a feeling we're gonna take lift off in that things a couple two three times let's go More. Oh yeah, let me just. Before we even get into driving this, it's just important. Listen, I can't even start this video without giggling because it's just so absolutely hilarious. So this is a 94 Bronco with a six inch super lift kit, which is a, it's a lift kit with two inch blocks in the rear instead of the four inch blocks that are supposed to come with it. Amp tires and some 24 inch Archon wheels on a Bronco. And uh, it's got neon lights in the wheel wells. It has window tint all around, a big old banner on the front, and it's got the ABS light on. Now you guys might be saying, Alex, Alex, calm down. You've never driven a lifted truck before. What do you know? And the answer is, is I've driven a couple two tree, okay? Not that many, but a couple two tree. And I understand what lifting a truck kind of feels like. It starts to get a little lofty for you. It's still, still is tight-ish, but requires you to go a little wider around your turns. You got a NorCal it if you, if you have the big boys on there. But one of the things that always is hilarious is that the trucks still manage to have some feeling of being connected to the ground, at least a small bit. In this vehicle, it legitimately feels like I am, I am on like a tow hook connected to an invisible truck about half a mile down that's pulling me. And this is just kind of guiding me through the lanes. But it's absolutely hilarious and I love it. There's nothing more fun 
than like like this 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 Bronco is the physical embodiment of somebody driving like this. But I feel like I would get pulled over. If we had this same scenario with the cop and I was in this one, I'd probably get pulled over. One of the things that a lot of people, especially car guys, because we're on Fitment Industries, so there's gonna be mostly car people around here that are gonna be talking some smack about this thing, is that it is in its own sense a, a little bit of a form of, of counterculture, right? So it's got the Cali Lean. If you guys don't know what Cali Lean is, it's essentially the the whole leaning thing. It right? makes the truck look like it's stowing something when it's not. It makes it look meaner because it's all snuffed up in the air. Like, you know how guys take pictures and their nose are always up in the air? Like this, they're like, you know, it makes them look more mean, more aggressive, testosterone. That is this. Now, it's a Bronco and an older Bronco, so it, it's, it's a little bit boxy. So Dennis Murphy, one of the comments that we put out there on YouTube said that the Bronco looks like pretty much like looks like an RC car or an RC truck and ow it does it really actually does and with these massive ass wheels this truck is literally going all over the place right now but here's the good thing it's like its own fair share of problems you know how the car rubs and you have to go real real slow into embankments not in this you don't you can go over anything your little heart wants. Now, whether the truck will follow where the steering wheel is or where you put the steering wheel, that's an entirely different conversation, but you can get over just about everything. Like, look at this, look at this, ready, ready? No problems. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, you wanna know why? Cause I drive a truck. This is, a, this is not a truck, this is a truck. This is a, this is a, a lifted truck. What's up, what's up, dude? You know, what's up? You just gotta do the two, two finger flick whatever it's called. Here are some negatives to having a truck that's lifted with only half of the stuff involved and a two inch block in the rear instead of a four inch block in the rear, which when I say block, in case truck nomenclature isn't common for you, it's legitimately a chunk of metal in the back that raises your little suspension system by an X amount of inches. So you got a four inch block in the rear, it's to match up with your six inch lift kit in the front because it could have a two, two inch box or could have a two inch block in there already or the OEM suspension is the equivalent of two inches. There's all sorts of weird things that I'm not gonna get into, but for the most part, it is a chunk of metal that raises the rear of the vehicle. This only has two inches instead of the four. Some negatives to this bad boy, besides the fact that you feel like you're gonna fly into outer space, is that I'm not really sure there's much functionality or practicality left to it. Like I'm pretty sure as I drive by some of these cars, they're thinking to myself, they're probably thinking to themselves, this is the end. Because this freaking truck is just aiming at them in the oncoming traffic because I'm only using one hand to drive this thing instead of two. And you can see me playing around with the steering wheel so much. Now, it, it's an older truck, so people are also gonna probably wanna argue that, you know, it's just lofty suspension or something like, or it's a lofty steering wheel, old steering wheel, but it really isn't. A lot of this play does come from the lift and a lot of this play does come from the massive wheels and then the 35 inch tires. But you don't really build a truck like this for practicality. Can I go? No. You buy a truck like this or you build a truck like this, because you want people to look at you and you do exactly that in this thing. This thing will not tow. This thing will likely not do a whole lot of off-roading. This thing is not a function truck and it's not meant to be. This thing is meant to literally look at you and say, F you, I don't care. And that's like the, 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 the whole embodiment of a counterculture is that whole statement, is doing something that not a lot of people would find pretty. That's, that's Jared's Bronco. I mean, it's cool. It's got a rough paint job. It's a little rough around the edges. I don't know if this floor pan is that solid, but that don't matter. Because when you're one hand slinging, 12 o'clock winging, leaning back, sipping some drinks and listening to some good old country music on a Friday afternoon while the sun's coming down, homie, it don't matter because it makes you happy. You can touch my breaker, you can smell my liquor, you can sing my thing, you can touch my boots.
You can pet my dog, you can drink my bush, but don't touch my truck. Skirt. <laughs> pro, automatic pro for the Bronco though, is you can just do this. I'm sorry, what? Hello? Boom. All right, listen, for real talk though, when you're looking at, you like my green chair? She's back, baby. This has seen a few two, three memories. <laughs> when you're looking at whether you wanna go with a lifted truck or a lowered slam car, in our audience, there's probably no comparison. You'd go with the slammed static car, but the point of the video isn't that necessarily to tell you that you shouldn't go get a lifted Bronco with some black gloves and only half a suspension lift. The point is, is to show you well, there's the same thing, just kind of in a different, different body, you know? It's not that practical. It's a little bit more flashy. It's daily drivable, but you lose quite a bit of practicality. One wants to send you to the moon and one won't let you out of the parking lot. But in all and in all, they're both pretty damn fun. Now, whether you actually want to have a mid 90s Bronco, that might just be a little bit of a weird choice based on well, who the owner is. Well, if you've seen Jared, you probably know what I'm talking about. But hey, in the comment section below, don't forget to let us know which one you'd like to see us compare next. I wore a flannel specifically for this video and I'm gonna go sing that truck song again in the Bronco by myself. We'll see you later.